What's up guys, Dustin Newey here, and yeah, I still have a cold, my voice is absolutely atrocious right now, but anyways, bringing you some more NHL 13 news, um, I apologize for the gameplay that's playing while I talk right now, it's from uh, Thursday, August 2nd, and just slightly before midnight, and I don't know what is up with the EA Sports servers for NHL 12, but absolutely terrible. So this gameplay is not very good. And I'm going to try and rush through this ASAP. Um, the server was so laggy. I looked it up on the forums. Apparently everyone was having lag problems, so I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> so anyways, sorry if I have to clear my throat here. Uh, the article is called NHL 13 GM Brain. And it's on, it's a blog on the EA Sports uh, website. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, pretty much uh, talks about the new GM brain, uh, which I've been kind of interested about. They talk. Uh, the article begins about uh, the whole AI overhaul, yada yada yada. The new GM thing is called the GM brain. Um, it's pretty long article, so I'm just gonna try and rush through it quick. <coughs> All right. Uh, it's kind of broken into... Uh, I thought it was broken into sections, but it's not really. So anyways, it talks about player growth and progression. Uh, so I'll just read it. The first in-game problem we had to solve was our previous player growth model. Previous NHL titles set every player in the league off on a trajectory of offensive growth, defensive ability growth, and athletic skill growth. The main problem with that approach was that there was no way to control it once it began. If enough players grew too well, we'd have salary creep. I don't understand why it says that. Salary creep. Leading to too many players asking for too much money. We had no real way to manage overall league growth within our old system, so the old player growth model had to go. <clears throat> Alright, so the new uh, model is every player in the league has a growth potential between half a star and full five stars. The higher the number, the higher a player's potential overall rating. Uh, green, yellow, and red are used to track the possibility of reaching their potential, and white means they've stopped growing. So in NHL 13, we are now able to control growth patterns that will basically fall within historical tendencies we want to model. Game modes, uh, producer Gern Sumal and hockey stats slash historic junkie uh, analyze all kind of source data to see how often draft picks selected in a specific round went on to achieve greatness in the NHL and how often they never went beyond the AHL. We are able to model and test drive scenarios using the tool we created. We can look at any one of thousands of players who we created, grew, and retired and see what their growth model behaved like, all in seconds rather than hours or days. Uh, so team trade blocks understand roster weaknesses and needs. Once we were able to create a manageable player progression model, we were able to move on. One of the major shortcomings of how all the computer GMs behaved in previous EA Sports NHL games was the inability to understand the roster in terms of what its weaknesses are today and what kind of team the computer will be managing next year or in year 5, for example, of the mode. One of the most consistent criticisms we read about was the computer GMs did not historically make the smartest decisions because there was no ability to think long term. It only knew what its weaknesses was today and the weakness could then change on a dime after a single roster transaction causing it to make decisions that seemingly contradicted its needs from a week earlier. Now thanks to the accuracy of the new player progression model the computer GM knows exactly what the roster is today and is able to grow its players instantly to predict what its rosters will be like in the future. The ability to predict that it will be a cup contender in X amount of years based on the players it has now allows a computer GM to understand what assets are expendable and which ones must be kept at all costs. We could never do that before. Uh, so with the trade block roster analysis, teams have a much longer term perspective of, on what uh, their roster is today, what it will be next year, and will select a trade block approach to address their specific situation. All right, next section, player roles, better differentiation between players. We have introduced the concept of player roles into NHL 13, and this allows all computer GMs to make much more logical choices in many key areas. There are 25 different player roles in the game, ranging from NHL first forward line uh, to top 4D and all the way to AHL backup goalie. 
Our new player role system allows computer GMs to have a better understanding of their current roster and across the league. Roles are also directly tied into salary negotiations this year, and players who are top 2D will ask between 5 to $7 million, which is the current league range for uh, the NHL caliber top pair defensemen. Furthermore, we've updated the free agency resign player logic to be more aware of the rarity factor of competitive roles in the league. If there only happens to be a small handful of top two defenders in the free agent pool, they'll know they don't have to drop their demands if there is an overabundance of top six or lower defensemen as they aren't competing for the same jobs. Player growth also factors into player roles and salaries. No longer can you sign the up-and-coming prospect to an eight-year deal at 650k a year and lock him in a long-term uh, contract as he becomes the next Claude Giroux or Steven Stamkos. Now players understand via their player growth uh, model that they may be an AHL first liner now and will accept the type of money for that current year, but in three years they'll be good enough to be a first liner in the NHL where they'll expect bigger bucks. Asking this player to commit to a three-year deal will mean you'll have to cough up a few million for that final year of the deal, rather than having to pay a token fee over and above what they expect uh, to sign for the current year. Roles directly tie into the trading block and how trading of players are evaluated. The greater the need to fill a need for a certain role, the more the computer team might be willing to put on the table or salary it will absorb to fill the need. Uh, player trading. Yes, we've rewritten it again. <laughs> Given the advancements in player growth, the computer analysis of its roster and the training block, and team's awareness of what its surplus and deficit roles are, we again rewrote the trade AI again to work with all these new features in tandem. We've updated the trade player with all new response and rejection messages, which reflect the new logic in GM brain. First, the computer will describe how it feels you've met its trade block surplus. This is a computed... <coughs> This is computed as a percentage of the total trade value you are asking to give up, in relation to which assets it is willing to give up. The second part of the response will be related to part one and how much you met uh, the wants of the computer team in relation to how open it is to giving up its assets. There will be no guesswork in making trades this year. The computer will tell you exactly why it's telling you to take a hike if it is unhappy with your proposal. Uh, Lions roster management. Discussing trading above brings us to another key part of how we've revamped our logic this year. In the past, if you offered a computer a trade offer that even put the team $1 over the maximum team cap or under the minimum cap, the deal would be rejected by the league. Thanks to some serious refactoring, of our logics, the computer now can test drive their trade results by adding players to its roster, making the necessary roster moves to be capped compliant, including call-ups or send-downs, and then analyzing the resulting roster to determine whether the trade is worth it. This process outlined above also allows us to radically curtail the amount of players going through waivers and make much better decisions on which combinations of players are best to be cap compliant. If a team is in a tough position and has to free up cap space, it can decide to choose to change the roster size, test all possible player salary combinations, and compare them against each other, whether a team is a rebuilder, a playoff hopeful, or a champion. And uh, also weighing into the decision making process uh, is the trade deadline and off season. Scouting and rookies. Our growth model and role updates have allowed us to make some changes to how we create rookies and how often rookies grow into the next coming of Wayne Gretzky. Scouting plays a key role for finding the next big thing, so we've taken some time to revamp scouting visits as well this year. Uh, we can generate any fictional draft class, plus any number of scouts with various grades in the different world zones, and then test what the results would look like after a single visit, two visits, and three or more visits. Um, we've now given you actual ratings as colored estimates, uh, rather than the old system of 7.5 and whatnot. The scout will provide more accurate info each time a player is viewed, and the margin of error will reduce as this occurs. If the scout is good enough, the red you see will convert over to the green, fairly accurate, or white if the number is considered exact. Uh, we've also abandoned the offense, defense, athleticism concept and broken all skaters down into six basic hockey skills, which are shooting, puck skills, senses, skating, physical, and defense. Each of these skills have a varying number of ratings contributing to that skill, which are in then turn represented, similar to the potential, from between one and a half stars to a full five stars. 
All right, so that is it. Um, not really a whole lot to talk about. Um, again, very sorry about the gameplay. It's really laggy and looks awful. I was playing defense, and I was having troubles just because the lag was kind of funky. I mean, some people can play with lag. I just absolutely can't because I never have it. So, um, The whole GM brain sounds really cool. I can't wait to take it for a test run and see how good it actually is. Um, and not only does it seem like it's just GMs, but it seems like the players, it's like the whole kind of system of, um, the GM mode kind of has its own brain now. Um, so I think that includes players and everything too, so they react differently, depending on whatever the situation is and whatnot. Uh, I kind of want to check out how this new, you know, like, s how the new scouting works. It sounds very cool and uh, kind of like the new trade logic and whatnot and the trading block. Uh, there are some screenshots in the blog um, for the article. Um, and the whole like the whole GM mode, actually the whole in general just kind of look of the game looks a lot cooler. Um, and I mean the last couple of years has basically been the exact same kind of look almost. So um, honestly I think it looks a lot smoother. Uh, not smoother, but a lot slicker, I guess you could say. Um, and that's about it, guys. Um, obviously, as normal, the link will be in the description below. Um, if you guys uh, want to please do comment on it. Uh, what are your thoughts on this new GM mode? What do you guys think it's going to be like? Or GM brain, sorry. What do you think it's going to be like? Um, are you excited for it? Are you not excited? I don't know. I, I'm personally excited. I think it's going to be cool. Um, I hope it hope it's as good as they're ramping it up to be. Um, I always find that EA Sports ramps up stuff way too much or get, like hypes it up, I guess you could say. And then it's just very disappointing when it's not what it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, the gameplay, it's just kind of there. I mean, I've tried different kind of... Uh, looks for the news and whatnot, um, and I wanted to actually get uh, a gameplay for uh, the other news article that's going to be out as well. Um, this one will probably come out after, but uh, yeah, like the leg was just so bad, I couldn't get any good games, and it was very frustrating. So this is the best one I got, um, and I didn't have time to really play around with it. Um, I'm sorry if uh, my reading wasn't the greatest at all but yeah I'm tired and not feeling the greatest so hopefully next time it's better I hope you guys like the NHL 13 news videos and uh, keep watching them uh, I'm pretty excited for the game coming out I hope they bring out a demo soon I'd like to do some gameplay with that and that's all she wrote on this news video uh, thanks for, again for uh, supporting the NHL 13 news I like bringing it to you guys and I like learning it myself um, so just keep showing the support, and I'll keep bringing it out. Uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.